Welcome to what are we playing this week, this time with driving games. Not racing games, but driving games. Now you may ask yourself, what's the difference between a racing game and a driving game? Well, in a racing game your objective is to beat the opposition, to be the fastest, to be concentrated non-stop on taking every turn just right, on maximizing performance and well, just driving to the best of your capabilities. Abilities. But a driving game isn't that. A driving game is relaxing. It's about you being on the road, listening to some relaxing tunes, chilling after a hard day's work and just taking in the sights. It's the kind of thing that VR was made for, which is ironic because I haven't seen any VR driving games yet, just VR racing games. That being said, let's start with one of my favorites, Need for Speed 5 Porsche 2. 2000 or Porsche Unleashed if you're from the USA. This game was amazing for its time. And quite frankly it still is, because this is a driving game most of all, it's a game that infuses in you the pedigree of every car made by Porsche. It just oozes classic car culture. Before everything went all, ooh 369 damn I'm fun, you know that underground. Which were okay games, but stylistically, uh, this was a game for gentlemen, not for people that watched Fast and the Furious once and thought they knew everything about cars. The game also had physics and handling that were, well, not realistic, but were realistic enough to give it a proper feel. The cars had weight behind them, they had weight on their wheels, you could actually see the way they would balance from one wheel to another when you were in a turn. This is something you don't see in a lot of cars because suspensions are just not really programmed into the game. It also had some great force feedback which for some reason didn't work this time, it may be because of the patch I had to install to get it to work on Windows 10. If it is, I may switch back to Windows 7 because, how shall I put this, every other game does force feedback wrong apart from this one when it comes to driving games, when it comes to cars. And the thing that really makes this a driving game is the scenery. No dull cities. You go through Europe's most beautiful places, through the Pyrenees Mountains, through the Côte d'Azur, through the Alps, through Monaco, through so many amazing places. Oh sure, they may be a bit low res now, especially the stuff that's rendered at a distance, but man, does it still have that feel of proper driving. You're not in some generic city made of steel and glass where it's always nighttime. You're driving around the world, well, driving around Europe, which is a really nice place to drive around. Sadly, you can't actually buy Need for Speed 5 from anywhere because Electronic Arts does not want to actually make money on good games, but I am leaving this one here because get it and play it. I don't care how you do it, get it and play it. It's the game that made me a snob when it comes to driving and even racing games and also made me really really want a Porsche 944. Did you know you can get an electric conversion for it? Well you can and it's awesome. Up next is a more recent game in the sense that well it actually hasn't been released yet. It's Drift Stage. I've only played the alpha demo of it and I encourage you to do the same because well that's the only thing you can actually play from it now but the reason why I have it here is because it has that driving feel that old, really old racing games had. You probably remember the ones where we just had the horizon in front of you, some scrolling scenery and it all had that look, that feel, that Look, there is a city in the horizon which I'll never reach and it always looked amazing. This was back when everything was made in sprites and yet this game recreates it in 3D and it does it quite well and the soundtrack is great, but most of all I like the cars in this game. It's that kind of racing game where the cars just look like, well, a better like the Night Industries 2000 kit from Knight Rider. They had those shapes, those futuristic angled shapes that made them look so goddamn fine, like the 944. Not really sure when Drive Stage is gonna come out, but when it does, I really recommend you to try it, because even the Alpha, it felt good to just drive in it. Not race, just drive through those tracks and just enjoy the road, the scenery, the music, 
the atmosphere that it created, the feeling, the mood. Lastly, well, every Grand Theft Auto game since the third one, because they were all more or less ideally suited for being driving games, because you could just hop in a car, any car, and go anywhere you wanted. At day, at night, you could just drive around, see the sunset, see the sunrise, and keep going until you had your fill. Depending on which game you prefer, either because of the cars, the styling, the graphics, the place, it could cost you anywhere between 10 euros for GTA 3 and the old ones to 60 euros for GTA 5, which is still kind of expensive, but you can get it at about 25 euros maybe when it's on sale sale during the summer. And GTA 5 does have GTA Online which is great for just driving around with friends. Now I'd also recommend The Crew because it's basically an MMO where you have the entire United States to drive around but well, how should I put this? Um, it does the driving around part well, but the rest is kind of horse shit and GTA Online already does the whole drive around a really big place with your friends thing better. Much better. It also has better racing. Well, that's it for driving games. Tune in next time for more gaming recommendations. Till then, buckle up and go for a drive. If you enjoyed this show, hit the like button, subscribe and share it with your friends. Or, if you thought it was horrible, then share it with your enemies and make them suffer. We shall be your weapon of vengeance. But if you liked what you saw, you could, I don't know, maybe donate because basically YouTube is horrible at revenue by using the link in the description or just buy my book. It's a fantasy book about, well, a lot of stuff. I guarantee it won't suck, and if it does suck, you can find me here and complain about it.